Hello everybody, this is Moses from Wilona's Cave. Um, we're going to be starting a new series, and of course continuing the older series, or the other series on this channel. Uh, we're going to start a new series using the Savage World uh, Adventure Edition, and uh, the game, uh, the Mythic Game Master Emulator, of course, uh, to, to run this, you know, this uh, role-playing game solo. Much like I do in every other one of my series. But... I really love Savage Worlds, uh, especially the character creations, the hindrances, the edges, just those things in and of itself is a story. And I've always wanted to, if you see in the bottom right of your screen, you see a little uh, gnome and a fox next to it. Um, I always wanted to play as a gnome, I've never played as a gnome, and this gnome is a druid, hence why he has a, a fox companion with him. But it, there's also, I'm going to take it even up a notch, with the hindrances. There's hindrances and edges in Savage Worlds where you get bonuses as long as you take hindrances. If you take more hindrances, there's a limit. But if you take more hindrances, you can start out with a couple or even up to three or more. I'm not too sure. Um, with my case, it's three edges because I'm taking a really bad hindrance. The character is blind. So there's a hindrance for that in Savage Worlds where you take on completely blind and you're a negative six on any roll that has to deal with a skill or a trait or something to do with visually. So if I have to look out somewhere to see something, I'm at a negative six. So it's almost a failure unless I explode. Uh, we'll explain exploding dice later on if it comes up. <laughs> I hope it does. Um, and also I am gonna even go further and test myself this gnome which by the way doesn't have a name yet uh, I will look it up in Xanathar's Guide to Everything a D&D book for the name under gnome names this gnome also has not just blindness I also took another hindrance of mute he cannot speak now if you can't speak you um, you know, I mean, if you've seen some TV shows like Avatar Last Airbender, I forgot what his name was, Longshot, I think, he didn't speak, and some other things. Like, there's people that don't speak, and then you have Toph in Avatar Last Airbender that couldn't see, you know, it didn't really, it made them a little more powerful. That's what I'm hoping in other instances, it made them more powerful. That's what I'm hoping that I will have with this gnome, that I will... Uh, through the course of the series, figure out my click or whatever it is, how, the correct word, and become powerful even though I have those hindrances. If you're mute, you could still whistle. So maybe he can learn how to communicate to others and his animals as um, with whistling. Who knows? So how I'm going to communicate with animals and people is by whistling to them. Somehow. I'll figure that out later. Very interesting stuff. Uh, his edges, uh, I get three of them because I believe I get another edge because of the blindness. Uh, I get an extra edge. So normally you get two at the beginning, um, which I believe that's the rule set. If I'm incorrect, let me know in the comments. But now I'm going to get three. So I chose Woodsman, which is a plus two on survival and a plus two on stealth in the wilds. Uh, I have Beastmaster tends to uh, become a druid and I'll put up some of the things about what a beastmaster is on the screen right now and danger sense I get a plus two on notice for any ambush or similar activity so let's say I have to hide because I have a higher sense of hearing his notice is very high by the way his notice is a d8 so in savage worlds the number four on a roll the four is the ultimate if you get a four, it's a success, okay? And every four after that, um, so if you get an eight, that's a success because of a four, and the eight, four more, is a raise. If you roll again and you get a 12, it's another raise. Raises are sort of like, like let's say I roll, I want to notice if someone's following me, I roll on a D8, I roll an eight. Now it's a 4 plus a raise, another 4 to get to 8, plus I exploded with an 8. An exploding die is when you roll the max number on the die. 
So an eight, if you rolled an eight, you get a roll again. And if I roll again in it, I get a four, not an eight, but I get a four. Now I'm at 12. That's four success. Now to the eight a raise and to the 12, that's a double raise. So let's say that somebody was trying to follow me and a four would be, okay, I, I, I notice that they're following me. An eight would be, I notice that they're following me and how far they are because I have such great sense of hearing, I can sense, I can hear how far they are. And a 12, which is a double raise, I could tell if it's only one, two, or three people. I could, I could even hear separate footsteps or if there's animals with them, like, you know, dogs or, or if they're druids as well and they have an com uh, animal companion, etc. Also, uh, there is no gnome race, except for, I hope, the fantasy pack does with uh, Savage Worlds, uh, just successfully crowdfunded. Congratulations to the Savage World team. Um, I can't wait for mine, of course I um, pledged, but I can't wait. If there's a gnome in there, great. Regardless, with Savage Worlds, there is, I don't know how many pages, but there's a couple pages or maybe even three pages on how to build your own race. So with the gnome race, what I did is I did an attribute increase which adds a plus one die to any of the attributes and I chose agility because I want to move my stealth checks up a bit or the stealth skill up a bit which his stealth is a d6 I didn't want it to be a d4 so remember this gnome druid is blind and mute so bear with me so I hope I don't screw up any words if I do I'll try to catch them in the edit of like he's overlooking the mountain top or Whatever it is, with the word, the, any words with sight in them, or like eyesight or whatever, I hope I don't screw it up, but uh, please bear with me. I'll try to catch it in the edit. If I do, I'll try my best to fix it. What I like to start with, if many of you have watched me for a while, and thank you for all my subscribers, by the way, that are following me, I love to start with a weather roll, especially if it's a new day. If it's a new day, I love to start with a weather roll. When I have to do a weather roll, I roll a d20. So let's see what the weather is right now. Uh, a 20 is amazing weather, a 1 is horrible weather. So let's see what I get. A 12. Okay, so it's kind of raining a bit, but it's a light rain. It's a little chilly outside, maybe a little breezy. It's a type of weather that where you don't want to just lay on the grass and look at the, the sky, because there is no sky, it's all clouds. You know, there's no blue sky, I mean. You can't see the sun. But it's not thunderstorm or hurricane or something like that. It's not crazy weather. Knowing the weather helps me world build. That's why I do that. And it adds more effect in the atmosphere. Okay, so. Let's see, what can I do? Okay, so let's get a name. Let's get a name for this little gnome. So we're gonna use Xanathar's Guide to Everything. And there are names, a lot of names in the back. And there's even gnome names. So let's see, there's no, I didn't know this, but the gnome, I guess the last name of a gnome is their clan name. It's not last name or family name. It's a clan name. So I, I think the dwarves are like that too. Okay, gnome name, male. Okay, this is a, a percental, so it's a D100. Where's my, there it is. So let's see, first name, first name is going to be 57. Kipper, <laughs> that's a fun name. Let me write that down. Second, or excuse me, the clan name, the family name, or the last name, here we go. 56, Knackle, Kipper Knackle. <laughs> this is such a funny name. Anyways, <laughs> whatever. Kipper Knackle. Now the fox doesn't have a name yet. We'll figure out the name later on for the fox. So, let's see. Let's do an uh, let's do the scene setup for Mythic Game Master Emulator. We're gonna do the scene setup right now. That's with a D10. So we roll, we're gonna roll a D10. The chaos rank is five. If we roll a five or below, the scene is modified. So let's see what we roll. A ten. So there's no modification. There's no altered or interrupted scene. So we rolled a ten. That's great. Finally, some good news for a change in my YouTube series, especially with that beginning roll of the scene setup. So my scene setup was, and it still is, <laughs> since I rolled a 10. 
A druid gnome is near a dry riverbed near the Demelza Mountains with his fox companion. So many of you may be watching and trying to figure out, well, okay, this sounds fun, and you don't haven't played solo RPG a lot. This sounds fun, but what do I do now? So it's kind of like playing Skyrim. When you start playing, you get to the point of, you know, exiting the cave or exiting the tunnel, and you just look around and you're amazed and you're like, which way do I go? Well, you have to press forward or you can't play. So pressing forward in solo RPG, for many of you um, that I'm learning from the comments and from messages online, uh, are trying to figure out yourselves. And there's some of there's a good amount of you that are, that are solo RPGists. Many of you have asked, okay, now what do I do? We have the scene set up and we have everything. Well, you got to randomize it. That's the best way to do it. So, you got to buy tables, okay? Xenathar's Guide to Everything is a really good one. And it has a lot of encounter, random tables on encounters. There's tons of supplements on random encounters and random tables, etc. I have many other ones I've mentioned before. Maze Rats, the Book of Random Tables, etc. So another thing you can do, of course, is you have your Mythic Game Master emulator and you can just ask it a question. Um, you know, I think the Variations 2, or whatever they call it, has more of a open-ended questions you could ask. Uh, the regular Mythic Game Master emulator is closed-ended. It's a yes or no answer. Uh, so we're going to ask the Mythic Game Emulator, Game Master emulator, is there anybody around... Now let's ask. So I'm going to say it's a 50-50 chance. And let's see. 65. At Chaos Rank 5 with 50-50. No. There is no one around at 65, correct? Yes. There is no one around. It's not an extreme no, but it's a no. So maybe someone's really far off in the distance, but they're not next to us currently. So we're alone. Interesting. So now that you know you're alone, what do you do now? So Kipper is alone. Why is he at the riverbed? I think he's at the riverbed, or on the, the close to the edge of the cliff, looking at the riverbed. Because he can sense that this location, he is a druid, so in tune with nature, inherently in tune with nature. I think he is saddened by the death of this river and the death of this location there's no birds chirping there's no water running there's no not many animals there's not much food the trees are dying around this location um out in the distance away from the mountains in the forest around the trees are lush but in this location the trees are dying and he's here just trying to think of what happened what's going on now let's ask a question if he wasn't blind could he see what's going on maybe there's a uh, you know a, a beavers created a dam long ago and it you know killed off this part of the river if he wasn't blind could he see the issue easily that's a key point can he see the issue easily and if so he could rectify the issue pretty easily as well so we're gonna say it's unlikely, it's unlikely that someone with sight could see the issue easily at Chaos Rank 5, so let's see. No. 85, almost an extreme no. Even if he could see, he couldn't tell what's wrong with this location. Kipper sits down at the edge of the river, or the the river of the past, the dead river. And his fox companion lays down with him and starts whimpering. The fox can sense the sadness of Kipper and trying to figure out what happened to this river and why is this part of the mountain range, the valley, this particular valley, dying. So let's ask the fate chart. Was the death of this river a natural cause? Because the surrounding areas are so vibrant I think it is very unlikely that this was caused by nature the death of this river I think I personally think 
humans or people or dwarves or whoever else. Somebody was responsible for this. Probably not dwarves, but somebody was responsible for this. Uh, I'm going to put it at unlikely chaos rank 5. I need a roll 35 or below. And it's a yes. 35 or below, nature caused it. 36. <laughs> oh, right on the money, it's a no. So it was almost a yes, but it's a no. So nature didn't cause it. Man, that was really funny. Wow. Is it 35? 36? God, wow. It's amazing how that happens. So somebody caused this. So as a no, how I would interpret this, and not an extreme no. An extreme no is definitely caused by a human, let's say, and or orcs or an ogre or whatever. Um, definitely caused by a person or people for um, some kind of vengeful purpose or something like that. But as a, as a no, so close to a yes, I'm going to put it as this was accidentally created. So somebody caused this, but it was by accident uh, because it's so close to a yes. And it's just a regular no. So no, the nature created it. And um, it was somebody or a group of people that accidentally caused this to happen. So we're going to put a new thread. The thread's going to be Kipper is going to try to find out what happened to this uh, dying river. Okay, any new NPCs? That's a no. Okay, so, and I think that ends the scene right here. Chaos Factor, I'm gonna put it up to six because, you know, he's not, even though not much happened in a way, but a lot of discoveries did happen. Um, and he's saddened, so his morale is a little bit shot. I'm gonna say the Chaos Rank goes up to six, and also there's a new thread. There is no new NPCs to add. We'll name the fox at a later episode, and I hope all of you enjoyed this episode, and I hope all of you enjoyed the first episode of this series. I haven't named it yet. Maybe I'll come up with a title when I'm uploading the video of the Gnome Druid's Adventure in Wilona's Cave series with using Savage Worlds and the game Mythic Game Master Emulator. We're gonna see how this goes. Uh, like I said, I'm quite nervous on the blind and mute um, hindrances, especially if I have to go into town for something like that. But we'll 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 uh, we'll deal with that when the time comes. So, thank you for everybody that's watching and everybody that's subscribed already. Uh, like, share, and comment. Let me know what I'm doing right or wrong. What you like to see more or or better, or what I'm not doing that well. Uh, and happy gaming, everybody. Bye.